When I hear Miles Davis's name, I think of The Rebel. He did what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it. There's only one Miles. The star in every decade. A master. Genius. People wanted to know what happened to the Rubber Band Sessions. Hearing something that the rest of the world hadn't heard that was totally miraculous. To get a call 30 years later that they were going to release it, then it was just, for me, I was like, wow, finally, thank God. You know, because this great piece of music should not be sitting on the shelf. In 1985, Miles Davis moved from Columbia Records to Warner Brothers. He'd been with Columbia 30 years, so it really was a, an incredible bit of news. By October, he was in the studio and he'd started recording Rubber Band. The head of jazz at Warner Brothers was Tommy LaPuma, a great producer. Tommy LaPuma was quite happy for Miles to really explore the music he wanted to. He brought in his nephew, Vince, on drums, and two young men who'd worked with him on, on The Man With The Horn, Randy Hall and Zane Giles. He wanted a contemporary sound, he wanted a commercial sound, and that's what he was gonna get with these two. Miles called me, he was having a New Year's dinner. So I went and I thought it was cool that I can go out to Malibu, hang out with Miles Davis. I didn't know who, who was gonna be there. We're sitting there having dinner, and then Miles says to me, he says, well, Everybody, I just want to introduce you to the producer on my new album on Warner Brothers. And I'm eating, I almost choked. I said, because he didn't tell me that. And I was like, what? He also wanted an album that was um, with different genres. So he wanted pop, he wanted to rock, he wanted jazz, funk, and, and calypso, and so on. How I even found out about Miles Davis and knew anything about Miles Davis was because of his nephew, Vince Wilbur. We had a band in Chicago, and, and, and Uncle Miles used to call my mom and dad's house and have uh, my mom put the phone down. They had the long cords, and she would stretch that cord all the way down into the basement and let, and let Miles hear us as we were playing. So after a while, we started getting pretty good and Miles would like give us direction over the phone. This went on for about four weeks, three, four weeks straight. Every day, every day, because we'd play on the weekends. And he'd critique us. As we got older, we got better. He heard something in, in those guys in that basement in my mother's house. So at one point, Miles was like, you guys sound so good. And he said, you guys want to make a record. I know he wanted something just really funky and street. And we came to the studio and we started just laying out these real funky street tracks and then Miles would start playing these colors. And, and he just opened it up to a, a whole nother level that we never would have thought of. I remember just doodling one time, he said, wait, wait a minute, play that again? Okay. And he said, I want you to play that all the way through. And that was the beginning of Wrinkle. Wrinkle, we played every night too. He loved that track. We love playing that. It was probably the best experience that I've ever had making a record, and I made a lot of records. I'm not quite sure what Miles meant, but that he decided it was going to be called Rubber Band. He'd actually got somebody to draw an artwork for it, but nobody's found it. No one knows where it is, so we used a painting by Miles instead. If you think of a rubber band, he's managed to stretch it over three decades. <laughs> we have a drawer in our house that has like pot holders and rubber bands. Every time I open that drawer, I hear rubber band, rubber band, rubber band. It's like, it cracks me up, man. The reason why we called it rubber band was because in the song Rubber Band, Miles was so excited. He was right in the middle of the session and he just stopped playing and just said, rubber band, rubber band, rubber band, rubber band. And then he went back to playing like that. Rubber band, rubber band, rubber band. He would go out after the sessions and play at Montrose and play in Paris and play in, he was playing these tracks, at least four or five of them. And people were like, okay, what is Miles playing and where can we get it? For whatever reason, it was Tommy and Uncle Miles' uh, decision to, I don't know, scrap it and, and move on. The title track had been out on a, on a couple of box sets, but in a, in a kind of an unfinished form. And some of the tracks I had never heard before Aaron and I, Miles' youngest son, we listened to it. It was still unfinished, and and we figured, this is great, man. This is a, you know this should be out, but let's kind of put a thing on it. It was wise to bring Randy and and Zane and Vince and everybody back together to finish it, so that you know it would be an album instead of just like some 
singles. You know, like let's make a let's make the album. You know? I knew his vision at the time of what he was trying to do with this record, and Zane knew his vision, and of course Vince knew his vision too. So between the three of us, we were like, hey, we know how this record should sound. And then we started thinking about vocalists for certain tracks. Now, for So Emotional, Vince had an idea to bring in Layla Hathaway. And I was like, wow, that would just open up the heavens. She has such a rich tone. And we just figured by putting the warmth and the richness of her voice and her musicality, because she's not a singer, she's an instrument. Vince definitely created that environment where I had time and space and we took a couple of hours and, and just built it, you know, kind of uh, let it evolve. And I tried to keep in mind in places where Miles is even playing to stay out of the way about that. Oh, I'm sorry, we like that. Come on in. <laughs> Don't be mad. It's the closest I'm ever going to get to writing a love letter to Miles Davis. So Lettucey came in and did her thing. I mean, Lettucey is just amazing. She can do all the jazz licks and hang with Miles. I'm, I'm, let's listen to that. I'm like, it's, it was a little different, but, I, but let's check it out. I like it. I was praying that I wouldn't cover Miles or be on top of him because to me, this is what it's all about is Miles Davis. When she starts singing, you don't need nothing else. I want to make a lie if you want to win. I want to win. Everyone who wants to know what Miles was doing when he left Colombia needs to get this record. To get to this point now where we can actually show you what he was working on then and then include his artwork too is really important to me. You know, that's really cool. I think that's uh, important. It would be important to him, yeah. So keep open mind and dig it because it's, 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 it's Miles. Miles.